Okay, while well, we're uh, waiting for parts in the mail, uh, we can talk about the uh, sort of the heart of the CPU, which is the ALU. ALU stands for Arithmetic Logic Unit. So it can do arithmetic and it can do logic. So it can add and subtract, that's the arithmetic. And it can do ands and ors and exclusive ors and things like that, which is the logic part. And it's all in one, it's all in one chip. Um, there are various types of chips. Um, the most common one is the 181. And we'll take a look at data sheets of all of these. There's the 181. Um, the 181 is, let me see if I can get something to grab these with. Uh, the 181 is a large package. Uh, and uh, I don't like it because it's big. It also is uh, too complicated, uh, believe it or not. We'll take a look at the data sheet and I'll tell you why I think it's too complicated. But uh, uh, most people use this chip and uh, uh, it's, it's simple to understand. The 181 did have all of its problems, like being too complicated. The reason it's uh, a problem is it uses four bits to figure out the mode, whereas you really only need three bits. If 16 different modes is just too, too many. Um, so instead of the, uh, the 181, uh, years later they developed the 381, uh, which is an improvement of the 181. So the 381 is a nice little part, uh, so I like, I like its size. Um, and uh, it only has three bits to control all the signals. So, uh, but it's the exact same functionality. It's a four-bit ALU. There's some complications in these things about how you propagate the carry. If you have four bits and you need an eight bit uh, ALU, you have to calculate four bits and then carry over and calculate the next four bits. And carrying over takes some time. It takes some number of nanoseconds or microseconds to do that. So you need to have predictive carry. Um, and so there was chips generated to do, to do predictive carry. Um, the, the 181 has a companion chip, the 182, that helps you do a lot of that carry. And the 381 also has a companion, 382. It isn't really a companion chip, it's a different type of chip. The 382 has a um, simple carry uh, mechanism, which is slower, but simple. And the 180, uh, 381 is, has a predictive carry, which is more complicated, but faster. So. There are two types of chips there. Um, the other chip that I found is this chip, uh, which is called uh, an IDT3, I mean, uh, IDT7381. So it's a 381 based, but instead of being a 4-bit ALU, this is actually a 16-bit ALU. So this means that you can have 16 bits in the A register and 16 bits in the B register and end up with a 16-bit add value, uh, output value. So this is a much larger part. Uh, let's see if I can get this one out. Um, and so uh, uh, I found a part, and I found a, uh, a socket for it, 68-pin 68, 68 uh, PLCC socket. So a uh, pretty fancy chip, 16 by 16. So obviously, uh, you need two of these chips in order to do 8 bits. Uh, and uh, so I, I might make a, uh, a, little, uh, a little card uh, that uses this chip um, to do an actual 8x8. Eight eight. That was 16 by 16 but we'll just use it to do 8x8. Eight eight. So um, I found those pretty cheap online so I decided to get one of those. I, I haven't heard anybody talk about this chip. Um, it's very, very fast. <laughs> Extremely fast chip. So it was developed even after microprocessors had been around quite a while. This was still developed because you could build circuits to do uh, video processing and stuff, and, and uh, you needed actual hardware that was super, super fast, and this would allow you to do that. Um, and just this little box that like, has some other parts in it. I have a comparator, the 85, that tells you if you're less than, greater than, or equal, and then some uh, programmable gal parts. So, let's take a look at some data sheets. This is the uh, ALU that kind of started it all, the uh, 181. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very nice part. 
it has some functionality. Let's take a look at it here. So um, there's, uh, let's look at this diagram right here. There's, uh, it's a four bit wide device. So there's an A register, A0123, and then there's B0123. And so those are the inputs, an A input and a B input. And then it does something inside and then it has an output. And the output is the F. So F0123. So it might be an add or an or, or you know, subtract, something like that. And you choose what function you do with these uh, control signals up at the top here, S0, 1, 2, and 3. So there's 16 different things this thing can do. There's some other pins that come out. There's an A equals B. If these two things are equal, it gives you that information. That's very nice, actually. I like that. And then there's a carry. So if you overflow this thing um, or underflow on a subtract or whatever, you can have a carry. And uh, you can propagate that carry to the next chip. If you have uh, using two together, uh, you can use predictive uh, propagation or uh, serial propagation Predictive propagation uses a G and a P, um, and um, it's a little more complicated than I want to get into, so we'll just kind of uh, not worry about that right now. Um, so let's take a look at the chip. These are the uh, 16 different things this chip knows how to do. Uh, it can invert. Uh, it can uh, do A, B, uh, inversion. So when you invert, it's like a minus one, uh, two's complement. Um, you can do a, a not a plus b. You can set it to one. So um, you 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 can do all of these things. You you can do ands and ors and uh, additions and things like that. So um, there's a lot of weird ones. A lot of strange ones, uh, you know. It does it does very very strange things, and one of the reasons is they they figured out some combination of gates to give them the things they wanted, and then they kind of got a, a couple extra along for the ride instead of just throwing them away. They just kind of included them in here, so in case well maybe somebody would want that sometime, like A minus B minus 1, or, you know, like, why do you need that? Or Anyway, there's some strange ones in there. And um, as you'll see when we get to the 381 chip, this is a much reduced and makes a lot more sense. Um, so anyway, this is what look the, what it looks like inside. It's it's quite complicated, a uh, bunch of combinational logic that allows you to do all of these things. Um, all right, so this is the 181, and uh, the companion chip, the 182, uh, allows you to do some uh, uh, this shows how you would use the 182. The 182 um, allows you to hook multiple 181s up and it does all of the predictive carry calculations for you. So it's complicated to use the predictive carry stuff with this chip. Um, if you just use the CN plus four, that is a simple carry out. And then you can just run that over into CN, which is carry in on the next chip. So that's the easy way to use this, use this chip. Here's the 382, uh, 381, I mean, the 381 and the 382, but 381. So 181, 381. So it's a smaller package, 20 pin, uh, 0.3 uh, inch spacing. Um, again, it's four bits, but you can see here, here's the truth table or the uh, logic table. It only has eight operations and they're the ones that you kind of need. Uh, a clear and a preset, uh, which is set the outputs to zero or set the outputs to ones. You can do B minus A, A minus B, A plus B, A exclusive or B, A or B, A and B. That's all you need. So this chip does all those things and makes it very easy. The difference between the 181 and the 182 is how the carry is propagated. So here's the internals of the chip. And you can see these are the carry generations. So in the one, the 382, you have an overflow condition and a carry, a simple serial carry. So like the 181 chip. 
It also has propagation, uh, 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 look ahead propagation in the uh, 381. So if you uh, want to use carry ahead propagation, it's much more faster. So everybody wants to do it if they're actually building a real computer. For a little home computer, you know, the the look ahead one's going to be fine. But all right. So let's take a look at uh, one more chip. This is the cool 16-bit uh, ALU that I found, um, and it uses the 381 nomenclature. Uh, it's an IDT7 381. It is a 16-bit device. Um, so if we scroll down here, you can see that we have uh, two inputs. We have the A input and the B input. They're 0 through 15, 0 through 15. So two 16-bit registers. They come in. There's actually uh, two clocking registers. You can actually, the, the registers are built into the parts, so you can actually clock these and store data in register A and store data in register B. And then you can either use those or you can bring in a separate uh, uh, information. So that's a multiplexer, um, like you could multiplex in zero instead of using the A register itself. So if you want to do something with zero, the uh, the actual ALU itself is, is is 16 bits and it has the same three bits as the 381 uses. So it has the, th the same instruction set as the 381, but does it at a 16 bit level. And then there's some multiplexing at the output and stuff. So it's a very complicated part. It's a very good part. It has a register on the output, uh, which is uh, tri-statable. Um, but it is a big, big part. 68 pins, PLCC, big part. Probably very expensive in its day. I think I only paid $4 for them online or something like that. But So they're cheap now. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can find... Uh, let's see, here's how you would cascade two parts. If you want to do 32 bits, uh, here's a 48-bit version. So you, you can do very fancy things with these parts. 32-bit um, configuration. You can see the carry, carry comes across. Um, yeah, very cool. Uh, I wanted to see the uh, the instruction set. Where is that? Uh, here. Here's the functions again. So they they should be the same. Uh, set everything to zero. Set everything to ones. Um, and then we have a, 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 that's interesting. R and oh, these are multiplexers. Oh yeah, so you can multiplex A's. So there's two actual registers. There's the RS1 and RS0, and you can multiplex those with A's or F's or B's. You can actually route itself back into itself again to do recursive stuff. So it's very very cool. Um, so it has all of the same as the 381, but only better. <laughs> has the exclusive or or and. And then it has the additions, um, and it has some, uh, not only just a simple addition, but it has uh, the subtractions, right? So it has A minus B and B minus A, and they're just written written funny here um, with the carry. So anyway, same the same ones, just uh, there's some additional multiplexer in there, so you have to take care of that. But very cool part. And uh, the best thing about this part is uh, 16 nanosecond clocked ALU operations. So you know, they use it for radar, sonar, image processing. So this thing screams. It is really, really fast. So very cool part.